All right. Uh, now, the truth is it's actually a very progressive uh, kind of conference for the Vatican to have. Uh, in fact, you could say that the Vatican, uh, by doing this, is evolving. <laughs> By the way, best-selling books of all time, right? Huh? Huh? Not too bad for the cat. Number one, by a long shot, the Bible. <laughs> so, of course, it was also the first book ever printed, so it had a bit of a head start. Uh, by the way, if you're looking for a copy, our first guest can probably get you one. She runs a pretty big book chain. Uh, and you know, off the top of the show, we had mentioned the fact that someone's got a plan to put 17 or $18 billion back into the economy. Well, our guest says that it can be done. And how? Just by teaching people to read. Is it that simple? We'll find out. Heather Reisman in a moment. Here's her bio. Heather Reisman is the reigning queen of the Canadian book business. The leaders are always people who have an original view, a passion for doing something. Generally, they're not focused only on the bottom line. They're focused on doing something they're dying to make happen. Originally from Montreal, Heather started a consulting firm in the late 70s and went on to become the president of COT. You may remember you used to get that soda pop in your lunch when you were a kid. But in the 90s, she made the move from soda to books. And when she did, well, it set off one of the era's most intense retail battles. Heather launched her indigo chain of stores in direct competition with the top dog of the day known as Chapters. Now, when the dust finally settled, Indigo had swallowed up chapters in a hostile takeover, and Heather became Canada's biggest book seller. Guess this is what it's like to be a rock star. <laughs> Indigo now runs about 200 stores and accounts for about 65% of the country's book sales. Uh, Heather has made online book sales a priority and recently launched a line of ebooks called Short Covers. She's also put her stamp on the company by refusing to sell some controversial titles. For example, Hitler's Mein Kampf. And she wouldn't sell magazines that reprinted the Danish cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. Heather is married to Jerry Schwartz, a billionaire who runs the Onyx Corporation. Heather is also a member of the powerful geopolitical think group called the Bilderberg Group. Oh, and she runs the Love of Reading Foundation to support literacy initiatives. Everybody, please welcome Heather Reisman. Nice to see you. Welcome to the program. Fantastic. How are you? Right? Um, so obviously right now, you know, people are, are running, they're very concerned about the economy as it relates to their own personal wealth and where the country can be in their future. At the same time, people do run the risk of becoming overloaded with these stories. But the idea of adding 17 to 18 billion dollars more and then beyond that into the economy to help the economy by something that appears to be simple like literacy. Right. Um, how does that work? How does that math work? Okay, so uh, first of all, this is not something you can fix overnight. That's the problem. But any big issues can't be fixed overnight. What people don't know is that almost 40% of adult Canadians are functionally illiterate, which means they can't uh, fill out a resume, they can't read a newspaper critically, they have trouble doing anything but the very basic stuff. Mm -hmm. For That's every, a high number. Uh, it's stunning, right? 40% of adult Canadians mm -hmm. are functionally illiterate. Is, and that's uh, functionally illiterate in one language or in, or in any language? In any language. Okay. So in Canada it would be if you're not English or French, depending on where you're okay. living, right? It would be hard to get along. And that's a statistics Canada. That's not just a, a made up number. A 1% increase in literacy adds 17 billion to the economy on two sides of the ledger. It is the people who fall into that category, that 40%, mm -hmm. who are the biggest drain on the social services, are the biggest drain on the hospitals, and end up in jail. 80% of people in jail are functionally illiterate. Okay, so. When you take it, when you stop having to put money in, and then you take those people, and they can contribute, it is a it is a one percent increase at seventeen billion. Now the thing about this is, I don't know of all the issues we face anywhere in the world, I don't know an issue that is so fixable, so easily fixable. I mean, you don't need the U.S. bailout program. You need little bits of money. The thing is, though, it starts at kindergarten. It starts at kindergarten. And what we've done over the last 30 years, we've robbed our primary schools of books. So the libraries mm -hmm. are literally empty. They're empty. So this boils down to just a simple idea, education. Like everybody knows this that is, education is what actually puts a country in a position to succeed. That's true, but this isn't even as big as education. I mean, this isn't even the broad education. Libraries and public schools have deteriorated unbelievably. So in the 1970s, mm -hmm. a typical public school 
got three new books per kid every year for their library. So if you had 200 kids, you got 600 new books, constantly added. Today, less than a third of a book per kid and who's goes cutting, in school. That's, that's the government cutting Government's this back. Cutting. Now, what's happened, to make the story even worse, but on the other hand, fixable, even worse, in middle class and upper class neighborhoods, the parents are just putting it in. And every one of your viewers, most of your viewers, will be at some school where there's a book drive. Mm -hmm. But in economically challenged areas where they just don't have the money, mm -hmm. they can't do it. Well, there's no help coming from anybody either. From nobody. I have visited well over 700 schools in the last couple of years across the country. You, George, you would be stunned. You would be stunned if you saw what I saw. Are you getting, are, is, is it time for, we all know the governments won't step in because they haven't been. Is it time for the corporate world to step in and do this? Well, okay, so Dalton McGinty, last year, we did, we, we've done this documentary, which you have here beside you, it's called also right, Ready on, on the Wall. On your website as well. On our website. We took it to Dalton McGinty, yeah. and he came up with $120 million over the next four years. It's just starting to flow. Have you seen some of that money yet? Because politicians like to say it's coming, but it doesn't come. Last week. Uh -huh. Took a while. Last <laughs> week, the, the first $20 million yeah. was put committed to last week. All right. Terrible. We're going to stick around. When we come back, we're going to talk more uh, to Heather uh, about this, but also about other things, including your business, how you handle business in this economy when you employ so many people, the stuff about the Danish cartoons and the Prophet Muhammad, that and more when we return with Heather